Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here. This lesson is representing uh, and describing transformations. Okay, we're going to be doing several of them here. And if you guys can, would you guys click like and subscribe? It just kind of helps encourage me to keep going. And all the lessons are found at MrMathBlog.com. Don't forget, this is called Integrated Math 1. So when you get there, click uh, the Integrated Math 1 link. So here's our question is, how can we describe transformations in the coordinate plane using words and algebra? Okay, so a transformation is just a change in position. Sometimes we stretch it or shrink it, so it'll change the shape or the size of the figure. So a pre-image is the original figure before it is moved. So we're going to be using triangles here. You can hear my fireplace crackling in the background, so it's a cold winter night right now. So anyway, um, and an image is, uh, is the new moved uh, figure. So we're going to take a, a figure, which is the pre-image, and we're going to move it. We might stretch it. We might rotate it. We might slide it along. So anyway, so when an object is transformed, we can use what's called prime notation to label the image. So prime notation is, uh, we use a little apostrophe here. So this says A prime. So that's what this says, A prime. So if we see the little apostrophe, it just means a prime. So here, a transformation, the transformation T, we took the pre-image of A and the transformation just moved it over here and so it became A prime. So that's the image, okay? So sometimes the transformation is called the mapping. So we, you know, we took this pre-image A and we did a mapping or we mapped it to uh, A prime right there. So just some words that we got to get used to. So rigid motion, uh, sometimes it's isometry, but it's almost always rigid. Rigid motion is just a transformation that only changes the position. It won't stretch it or shrink it or change the size or shape. So rigid motion, motion preserves uh, the distance of segment length. Uh, angle measure and all the shapeness of it. So here, find the unknown coordinates for each transformation and draw the image. Compare the image to its pre-image. Okay, so here it is. Here's our rule. We're going to take each ordered pair x, y, and we're going to subtract 4 from the x and subtract 3 from the y. So here's the pre-image. It's this triangle ABC. So we're going to graph 0, 4. So it's going to be right there. It's going to be A. And then B is going to be 3, 0. It's going to be right there. Okay, and C is going to be 0, 0. So triangle ABC is going to be the pre-image right there. So there it is right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take this ordered pair, 0, 4, on all these ordered pairs right here, and we're going to subtract 4 from the X, subtract 3 from the Y. Okay, so here we go. So we subtract 4 from this X, so it's going to be 0 minus 4, and then subtract 3 from this Y, 4 minus 3. That's what this says. Okay, so this one's uh, this 3 minus 4 and then 0 minus 3. So we subtract 4 from all the x's and we subtract 3 from all the y's. That's going to give us these ordered pairs right there. Okay, let's graph those guys. There's those guys right there. Now, can you see that um, uh, this blue triangle is the same size and same shape as the, as the pink one right here? So I would say that this one's a rigid motion, but we'll prove it real quick, you guys. So... A comparison of the image and the pre-image shows that the image is the same size and shape as the pre-image, so it would be called a, it's a rigid mapping or a rigid transformation, okay? All right, so here's the second one right here. So, so here the rule is we're going to take every ordered pair x comma y and we are going to go 2 times x and keep y the same. Okay, so it's going to be twice whatever x is and take y with triangle JKL. So we're going to take this x and multiply it by 2 and keep that y. Going to take this x, multiply it by 2 and keep that y. And same with this one right here, okay? So there's JKL right there. All right, remember, we're going to just multiply all the x's times 2 and keep the y's. So it's going to give us that triangle, okay? So when we graph those, so negative 2, 2 would be... Uh, right here, negative 2, 2. This would be J prime. And then 4, 2 would be over here, 4, 2. There would be K prime. And then uh, 4, negative 4 would be right here. That would be L prime right there. Okay, do you think it, st it stayed rigid or is it the same shape and size? Well, no. A comparison of this image to the pre-image shows that the image and the pre-image are both right triangles. Uh, but they are not rigid motion because because the pink guy is a lot bigger than the blue guy right there. Okay, so for each transforma transformation in section C, what rule could we use to map the image back to its pre-image? Okay, so 
here's this one right here. So here's the image, and the, I'm sorry, here's the pre-image, and here's the image. So how would we, you know, and what we did is we subtracted four and, and subtracted three from the blue guy to get to the pink guy. So it's asking, what can we do to get this pink guy back up to this blue guy? Well, we just do the opposite. We just add four and add three right there. Okay, and imagine if I could take this triangle and it would... Um, add 4 to the X, that would be moving it this way, 4 units, and then add 3 to the Y, it would be going up 3 right there, and there it is right there, so add 4, add 3 right there, okay, let me just shoot that back, there we go, all right, and then so uh, uh, this one, on this one here, uh, we just undo what we did here. So, so instead of multiplying by two, we take uh, this. We take this pink guy and we take half of two, and we keep y the same right there. We just undo what we did right there. Okay. All right. So, ordered pair rotation rules. Your book doesn't talk about this, at least in this section right here. But it's. Uh, I'm just going to give you the rules right here. If it's a 90 degree rotation, it takes our ordered pair and it just flips the x's and the y's. So, for example, if we had four negative eight, then a 90 degree clockwise rotation. We have a counterclockwise also, which is a little bit different. We just switch around the x's and the y's, okay? So 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation is um, uh, we switch the x's and the y's and we, we make it negative y right there. So for example, if we did 4, negative 8, then it's going to be positive 8, 4 right there, okay? And then uh, 180 degree rotation is we flip them around the x's and, I'm sorry, we just negate the x's and the y's right there. So uh, keep the, the places in the same spot, but we just negate them. So negative, or 4, negative 8 is negative 4, 8. Okay, reflection over the x-axis, we just negate the y, so 4, negative 8 becomes 4, 8. Over the y-axis, we just negate the x's right here, so we get that. Okay, all these transformations or mappings preserves rigid motion, so here's a coordinate, uh, use coordinate uh, notation to write the rule that maps each pre-image to its image. Okay, so then identify the transformation and confirm that it preserves uh, length and angle measure. Okay, so there's the, the guys being graphed right there. Does it look like this uh, triangle is the same size as this triangle? It does to me right there. Let's look at the, the x's. So the x goes from 1 to negative 2. Okay, the 4 goes, it goes from 4 to negative 2 right there. Okay. So what's happening here, you guys, is the transformation seems like, um, uh, so can you see these guys being flipped right here and it's being negated? So 1, 2 is, and then over here, if we flip them around and negate it, it's negative 2, 1 right there. Okay, if we flipped these guys around, 4, 2, and then negate this, it becomes negative 2, 4. Flip these guys around and negate this, so instead of... Um, uh, Negative 2, 3, we negate it and make it 2, 3 right there. So what this is, is it's a counterclockwise rotation. So so now we got to show, so oh, the angles are going to be the same right there. Now we got to show the length by using distance formula. There's our friend from a lesson ago. So distance formula, we go ahead and plug them in right there, and we find out that they do have the same length. This one's easy. You can just count it. That's 3, and then that's 3 going across right there. But for BC, we got to do uh, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 uh, plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And we're going to square those and square root it. So it gives us root 17. B prime, C prime is root 17. And these guys get us root 20. So the lengths are preserved. So that for um, uh, the lengths and the angles are going to be preserved. Therefore, it's a, a rigid motion. Let's try it with this one right here. I'm going to go a little bit faster here, you guys. All right, so there they are graphed right there. So the x coordinate of each image, okay, can you see that they're equal to each other? The x's are equal to each other. The y coordinates of each image looks like they're negating. They're opposites of each other, so they're opposite. And the transformation is a reflection across the, y, the x axis. Okay, and you can see a picture right here. Can you see the mirror image right here? It just kind of looks like it's reflected across. This just kind of flows up here. Okay, so it's reflected across the x-axis. So there's our rule for the reflection across the x-axis right there. Okay, so using the distance formula, we got to find that the lengths are all the same. So there it is with the lengths being the same right there. Okay, so everything is preserved. So that would be a rigid motion. Okay, use coordinate notation to write a rule that maps each pre-image to its image. Okay, and then confirm that it is not rigid. Okay, so here we go. We go from 
4, 1 to 4, 3. Here we go from negative 2, negative 1 to negative 2, negative 3. 0, negative 3 to 0, uh, negative 9. Looks like the y coordinates are being multiplied by by 3. So the x coordinate of the image and the it equals the x coordinate of the pre image. The y coordinate of each image is equal to 3 times. So look at this. Uh, this 3 is 3 times this 1. This negative 3 is 3 times that negative 1. This negative 9 is 3 times that one. So the y coordinate is 3 times uh, its pre image y coordinate. Okay, so if we used a distance formula, we just have to pick any two sides and we just have to show that they don't equal. So it is not rigid since the side lengths are not equal to each other. They got to be equal and the angles got to be equal. We just got to show one thing is not equal and it's not uh, rigid. Okay, same thing with this one right here. Okay, I got to kind of go. So the x coordinate of each image is twice the x coordinate of the pre image and the y coordinate of each image is half the y coordinate of its pre image. So the transformation is given by this rule. So every ordered pair we take twice x and take half of y right there. Okay, and then uh, using distance formula, you find out that the distance lengths are not equal also, so the transformation of that would not be rigid. And if we graph these, you guys, um, they would be different sizes. And um, so we, it, you know, just looking at them, you can see they're not rigid. How can we confirm that a transformation is not rigid motion by using a protractor? Well, if any angle measure in the pre-image is different from the corresponding angle measures in the image, then the transformation is not a rigid motion. They have to have equal angles or we call them congruent angles so so we could use the protractors to measure all the corresponding angles and if the, all the measure all the angles were equal then we still need to check the lengths you guys because here here we have two triangles and this is an equilateral triangle so this is 60 60 60 this is a bigger equilateral triangle 60 60 60 but since this side length does not equal this side length right here they're not rigid right there so when we stretch it out it would not be a rigid motion right there. All right, you guys, I'm running out of time, so I hope that helps. There's your assignment. Take care if you're in my class.